Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Nickelodeon has been trending in the past few days. Um, if you guys do not know, um, they dropped this new, well, not Nickelodeon dropped, but the ID channel dropped a new documentary called Quiet on the Set. I've been talking about it for a while, that it was coming out. Um, back in 2022, I had did a deep dive on uh, Jeanette McGurdy when she dropped her book called I'm Glad My Mother Died. And we talked about uh, Dan Schneider in that video. It's still on YouTube. And a lot of people have covered Dan Schneider over the years. I know Sloan did like a really good breakdown on Dan Schneider as well. Um, he's the weirdo from Head of the Class that was obsessed with feet. And a lot of this stuff, when I watched the documentary over the past two days, um, was new to me. I felt like I knew a lot about the Nickelodeon rabbit holes, but there was definitely a lot of new stuff in the documentary that I didn't know. By the time I Carly and all that stuff came out, I was, you know, too old for it. By then I was like a teen mom taking care of my kid minding my business but I was there as a kid when all that first came out so the first like three seasons of all that so I remember like the little girl I can't think of her name um that was real popular before my Amanda Bynes and Keenan and Kel Angelique Bates I remember all of them so that was my era so I never realized that the whole iCarly thing was as sexualized until, you know, recently. But I was really disturbed by, by all of the kids and their treatment, but especially like the black children. It was something very nefarious. It was almost like a modern day minstrel show with the young black boys, the two of them that were on um, the show. Cause I never knew about the whole dare aspect of Nickelodeon like I said by the time that came along you know I was probably busy breastfeeding you know like I don't even remember that chapter at all um so that was you know at that point I wasn't watching Nickelodeon you know I'm watching Sesame Street you know what I mean with my baby um so there's like a whole chapter of Nickelodeon that I missed but um I was really disturbed when they had a superhero called Mr. Big Nose with the little black boy and when you look at his costume, he definitely looked like a, like, it looked like two penises on his shoulders with the two balls. And he had this huge, no, he, he just looked like a, a ugly ass troll character. It was just weird. Then they had him in the latex, you know, one piece suit and a little boy wearing spandex or latex, whatever they had him in, you know, it, it's showing his nether regions, you know, it was just very weird. He looked like a brown condom. And then there's a scene where he's like, ha-chu, and he blows all this clear snot material on the black woman's face. And it was literally a cum shot. And I'm watching this as an adult, like, what the, like, I never saw that ever. I never saw that episode. I never even heard of this, this whole little situation. And so that was really disturbing that grown adults watch this with adult eyes and they were okay with it. It's just weird to me because it's like I'm watching it with adult eyes and I don't understand how this is kid-like, how it's funny. Then there was like little challenges, um, the sugar challenge. And I didn't know anything about this. Like I said, this was all new stuff to me that I was watching the doc. And so they're having to pour all this sugar in their mouth. Um, and then the little boy said that at some point the sugar congeals. I didn't even know sugar did that because again, I don't pour sugar in my mouth, right? So it would congeal. And as they're trying to talk, all this clear slime is running down their chin. And it looks like somebody nutted, sorry for being vulgar, orgasmed in their mouth. And they're trying to talk and all this clear shit is just dripping down their chin onto their chest. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? This was allowed on television? It looked like, like orgasm juice. I'm like,
like these poor babies. These were babies. These were kids. It, it was it was really triggering to watch as oh I'm trying not to cry. It was really triggering to watch. Cause oh huh, I didn't like it. I did not like it. It definitely ruined my childhood. So thank you. It was hard to watch. I didn't think I was gonna get all emotional, but yeah, it was really triggering. And um, especially when the little black boy, when they fired him and he was mad at his mom and his mom was one of the few that would speak up. And it was almost like they got punished because the mom was starting to see like the fuckery that was unfolding. And then when she said that that literally ruined their relationship as mother and son, you know, um, for a long time, like I just felt so bad because it's like she was trying to protect her child and she got punished for it. And then for years, you know, the son is upset, blaming his mom. And to see that these kids basically sacrifice their childhood so that we could have a childhood, right? So that we would have something to watch on Saturdays watching SNCC and even now as an adult, when I go back and I watch shows like Ren and Stimpy, which was one of my favorite shows as a kid, like in fifth, sixth grade, and you watch these cartoons with adult eyes and it's just like, why was this in here? Like, why why are Ren and Stimpy on a, on a saw? And it looks like he's having anal sex with Ren. Like, why was this here? Like, it's, it's just very disturbing. And... Another thing that really disturbed me too was like the women, you know, the women writers and how they were just mistreated, how they weren't giving the same pay as men. But then I also have to, the one lady that stayed the whole time, because the one lady finally left and she sued. But the lady who stayed the whole time, it also made me kind of question her like, I get it, you were also a victim in a way, but like, why did, why did nobody speak up for the children? Like, why did people just feel like this was okay? And I remember I was one of the first people on YouTube who did a video about Orlando Brown. And when I did my video, it came from a very fucking sincere place. And because I was really concerned because I had been following him for years. And I thought he was funny, talented. I remembered him as, as a kid. And then he just started kind of going off the deep end. And I remember that bitch, Vlad TV, took everything off of my video that I created on Orlando Brown, like what is going on with him? And he took my, he they watched, his team watched my videos and then they took all the clips from my videos to question Orlando Brown and stuff like that. And then ever since then, he's just been exploited. And um, you think back to like all these kids and, and the sacrifice that they made and it makes me think like what really happened on set to these children because if this is what they're showing on television if this got greenlit as being okay what was really happening behind the scenes and there's a lot of things that people sometimes they don't talk about because they they kind of put it in the back of their mind they don't want to think about it it's just that traumatic but I'm glad that the truth is finally coming out because like I said, it's been so many people on social media, on YouTube, who have been talking about Brian Peck and Dan Schneider for years. And we're finally, it's almost like we're also low key getting our justice because for so long we were called conspiracy theorists and crazy and haters and jealous and told that we're everything but a child of God. And now all of this information is coming about coming out about the industry and the things that were happening to these kids. And again, this is not to demonize the whole Hollywood, right? Because there are people who are good people who work on set and who do try and look out, you know, for others and stuff like that. But unfortunately, absolute power corrupts. And what you have in Hollywood is a situation where People who may not have been popular, they're not cute, 
they don't have like the it factor and they get into positions of power. Harvey Weinstein, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he's not handsome whatsoever. He's not winning any beauty contest. So when you put somebody who looks like that, who's bad built, low self-esteem, and they get to be in a position of power, it goes to their head. And it's almost like I'm going to pay back everybody who ignored me, who didn't think I was going to be anything, who didn't find me attractive. Now I'm going to make these so-called beautiful women get down on their knees and I'm going to get them in the most vulnerable positions and bring them down a notch. And I think that was the same thing, you know, with Dan and, and Brian Peck is that you have these people who are in positions of power and it went to their head and they were all drunk on power. Um, Brian Peck should have never, ever been allowed to go back on Nickelodeon after his conviction and to find out that everything that he did to that young man. It was just really disturbing. But one of the things that really disturbed me about Brian Peck is that when he would bring the kids and the families to his house, he had this weird obsession with John Wayne Gacy. He was even writing John Wayne Gacy while John Wayne Gacy was in prison. He was writing him. And so you got to ask yourself, you know, what was really going on that he felt? This is a man who's in charge of being around children like Drake Bell. What adult wants to attach themselves to a serial killer who killed 31 young men and buried them underneath his home? And the John Wayne Gacy, if you ever go down that rabbit hole, I remember I did the 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 Jeffrey Dahmer, if you guys never watched my, Def my Jeffrey Dahmer deep dive, a lot of these serial killers were, were MK assets. A lot of them, especially Jeffrey Dahmer, nobody can tell me otherwise. Um, so I, I find it very interesting, his ties to this serial killer. And even when I went down the rabbit hole with Jeffrey Dahmer, it was very interesting, a lot of the ties to him. You know, from like Adam Walsh and, and John Walsh and just all the stuff that ends up being tied to these serial killers. It was just very, very disturbing. So we're going to watch this quick snippet here. Uh, hold on. Let me make sure this is muted. I'm, 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 uh, it's really disturbing. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to like break down crying, but. That shit just be bothering me. Okay. We're going to watch this real quick. This was a, a snippet here. Brian's, Brian's house, house for a barbecue. For a barbecue. And, his and his house was a little off. off. He had a room that was just dedicated to like vintage toys and comic books. And he converted his garage into like a Planet of the Apes shrine. I noticed a painting in the room that stuck out to me because it had nothing to do with Planet of the Apes. It was of a birthday clown holding balloons. And Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around, and on the back it said, To Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. It was a self-portrait of serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. At this point, I'm like 14. I didn't know, like, the details, but I knew, like, this guy's serial killer who like killed a lot of young men and boys my instinct was like everyone has to see this and so like all the parents and the kids come into the room and then brian presents the painting again and brian actually developed a pen pal relationship with john he kept like this pile of letters and photos from okay i'm sorry i forgot to mute it i'm sorry i'm just getting too emotional um, but yeah, it, it's really, it's really disturbing. I'm sorry for the echo. I forgot to, to mute it, but it, it's just really, 
it's really disturbing and it makes me feel like it, it's deeper than that what made john wayne gacy of all people even want to write brian peck and maybe i just look at stuff way too deep than i should or esoterically like I, I i don't know it's just weird that's just such a weird connection and it's like were you messing with these children as far as like some weird like initiation or sacrifice to john wayne gacy it's just weird and then it makes me feel like have they really checked this man out to see if he was not involved in possibly you know killing of anybody since this was his pen pal because he seemed very much protected even after he went to prison for molesting um drake bell and others he got right back out and was on the show they even talked about him in an open secret and that's another rabbit hole an open secret so it's it's just like I learned a lot from this documentary. I thought I knew like everything that went on with like Nickelodeon, but there was definitely a lot of stuff that I did not know that I learned and I thought it was well put together. Um, but props to social media, props to influencers, because this would not have been an, on national television if it was not for us influencers who were going back in time and saying, what is going on at Disney? What is going on with Orlando Brown? What is going on with Amanda Bynes? Who, you know, it, like people like Sloan and others who dug deep. This is really where mainstream television is getting their content from. They're getting it from social media. Cause these are conversations we've been having for the past five years. And I, I'm just really happy that it's finally coming out. And hopefully these children will get their their just dues and it won't just be dismissed like oh they're just crazy they're just spoiled oh they're rich just because somebody's rich or has money does not mean that what they went through is any less traumatic so it, it was really sad just to like really watch that and as far as josh peck I mean, the, the fact that his name is, his last name is Peck, and we I understand he's not related to Brian Peck, but it's very weird that Josh Peck is like caping for like the Nickelodeon crew. And and I get it, maybe, you know, him and Drake Bell, just they, they don't have a good relationship. But the fact that he's like caping so hard is just very, very, very weird. Very weird. I see he's trending again. I'm at the check and see why he's trending now. But there was like another group. They came out and they were kind of, oh, Drake Bell is addressing him. This is, this is real. Oh, well, let's watch this. Breaking news, bitch. Let's go ahead and watch this. Let me go ahead and share my screen and mute my mic. I just want to let you guys know that um, this is really... Uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time and um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, so not everything is put out to the public, um, but I just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and um, it's it's been very uh, sensitive, um, but he has reached out to, uh, uh, to talk with me and, and helped me work through this and and uh, has been really really great so i uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh take it a little easy on him get your ass up out of here um <laughs> sorry <laughs> he's reaching out to you now because he's getting drug on social media so don't don't tell us to take it easy on him Did that see that and that's the part I don't like is that the fans go hard defending you because let's not forget your ass, you know what I'm saying, I'm caught up in some shit too with some underage, you know, with that underage girl. Um, don't tell folks to take it easy because people are triggered right now. And the fact that he's, you know, I love Dan Schneider's ass, people feel away. People feel away.
So that's great that he reached out to you, but he reached out to you because he's getting drugged. He's been getting drugged ever since this came out and he was trying to downplay, he was trying to downplay your pain. So that is why people were dragging him. So of course he's going to reach out to you and say, well, call your dogs off of me. So boo next. Um, yeah, Ned declassified. They were clowning him too. Let's go. I have that pulled up. I think it's, where is it at? Okay, here it is. We're going to watch Ned Declassified. They were saying some little slick stuff. Oh, this doesn't have a video. Okay, hold on. I thought it had the video. Let me see if I can find it. Because they were like on Twitter. I mean, kick in. I thought she had the video up, man. If I can't find it, y'all might have to go search for it. Um, Let's see. Twitter should have it. Okay, here it is. Good old Twitter, child. You know, Twitter going to be ready, honey. All right. Let me pull this up here. Okay. Daniel, I told you. Daniel, we told you never to speak about that. Get back in your hole, Daniel. And give me your holes. Sorry, we shouldn't joke about this. We really shouldn't. This is awful. Because this is about us. Listen, our set was not like that. Um, uh, and no, it's fucking awful. The 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 Drake Bell shit is a like that's crazy to hear. I I that is yeah. fucked, man. And that never came out, which is really wild. I don't think it's a laughing matter because you have a bunch of kids who are literally trauma traumatized and who are still going through it to this day. You know what I'm saying? And then you have all of us as fans because we were literally raised on Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. You know, like. I guess for this generation, y'all have social media, y'all have TikTok and Snapchat and other things to kind of keep you guys entertained. Our entertainment was Nickelodeon. We'd play all day. And then, you know, when the streetlights come on, you would come home and that's when Snick started. Remember Nickelodeon was um, Nick at Night was Snick for the kids. And that was on Saturdays. And we'd watch Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, all that. It was like a whole lineup from like six until I think about nine o'clock, you know? And then during the day, there were all types of like different shows, like Double Dare and things like that. So I think it's kind of tacky, um, you know, for Devin Werkheiser, whatever the hell his name is, um, to make fun of them. So people were dragging the hell out of him yesterday for that. They really were. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.